So when I was studying at the university, I had a professor, a Spanish professor, who just start the class with some random story, very similar to the Odyssey, where this uh, guy left his family, his friends, everybody, even his dog, to go into an adventure to um, another place abroad. And he fight those uh, fantastical beasts like dragons and demons and maybe some skeletons. I don't, I, I don't, I really don't remember. And he was out for like 30 years or so. So when he comes back to his house, to his home, um, nobody could recognize him except one, his dog. In that moment, one student uh, behind me starts screaming like, his dog, how old is that dog? And I remember the professor started laughing and for that reason, everybody started laughing, including myself, of course. And he, uh, the, uh, the professor started saying like, you're worrying about the dog? And there were demons, there were dragons, there were a lot of fantastical beasts, and you are worried about a dog. Years later, I forgot about that, but years later, I come back to that story, and I noticed that the only person who was right was the student behind me. He, he had a pretty good argument. Hello everybody and welcome again to my channel. My name is Emilio Suarez. I try to identify uh, questions that I always have when I see uh, movies or TV series more concentrated on storytelling and inside of that, uh, screenwriting because I'm a screenwriter. So I try to ask some questions or, or answer some questions that maybe some people have or have listened and we put them here into a discussion. So if you kind of like this kind of uh, videos, just uh, uh, consider subscribing or sharing, like, comment, e everything you want. Anyway, coming back to the story, why I think the student behind me was right about his question. Here's the thing. When we write a story, any kind of story, we create rules for that universe that we are creating, okay? Doesn't matter if it has a multiverse or a universe. Everything that you create in a story, it's based in a alternate universe that you create, that came out of your head, of your mind. So, if you are gonna put some uh, strange things that don't exist in the real world, Usually, not always, but usually the writers give some kind of rules of how uh, those uh, creatures function in that universe, in that world, or even extraterrestrials or whatever. Imagine that you're writing, for example, Superman, okay? Superman doesn't exist and you're creating it. And you put as a rule that Superman can't from the planet Krypton and comes to, uh, here to Earth and the yellow sun that we have gives Superman his powers. Uh, when he has uh, Kryptonite uh, very close to him, it kind of deplete him of his powers and or could kill him. You are not going to put Superman out of nowhere just picking some kind of uh, big kryptonite stone and start playing with it because he just feel like it okay you already established some rules in there and that's the exact same thing with everything that is in your story including things that you think they don't need any um, rules okay now that doesn't mean you have to put a rule and express it in your story for everything that you put in it, unless you're gonna do something different with it. Here's the example of the story from the beginning, okay? The professor was telling us this story 
and for some reason, just because of other stories and tales and all of that, we kind of know how dragons work, how maybe some demons work and all of that, but we know how dogs in some way work, okay? Because we have dogs here uh, around us. They exist in a reality, in the real world. So when you put a dog who's living, I don't know, 40, 50 years, we kind of get a little bit worried. I have no idea if dogs can live that long, uh, really. Uh, but I assume not. It doesn't matter what kind of age. The, the thing is here, if you're gonna put that before you introduce the dog living for like uh, 50, 70 years or whatever, we put our rules into that dog, okay? Uh, because you never present us with the rules that that dog could live so long. So when you don't do that, we assume that the rules from our world go into that world that we are seeing in the story, or we are hearing in the story. The same thing with people like us. Maybe they're not from Earth, but they're from another planet, but they really, really look like us. Unless somebody gets hurt and you see the blood coming out in a different color, or that they say that they have two hearts for some reason, I don't know, any of that. We assume that if you just shot them in the head, they're gonna die. We assume uh, if you just punch them very hard in the face, they're gonna feel it and they're gonna be in pain. So unless you don't establish that they're different in some way, we're gonna assume they still have the same rules as we do. Yoda, for example, in Star Wars, okay? Um, Yoda has like 800 years or something, but we never ask why, uh, how, or how is that even possible. And they don't, I, I don't recall that they explain that, but it's not necessarily. Why? Because he looks different than us. So we assume that his species live longer for whatever reason, for whatever the biology of the planet that he came from, okay? So we start putting all those things and we believe in that, except when you put a dog living for like 50, 60 years. That's where we say like, how is that even possible? The point with this is, even if a story is fake because it come out from our head, I use the word fake, but that's not the correct word to use because even if it's created by our imagination and it doesn't exist, even if it's based on things that happen in real life, you still have to uh, move it in a certain way and put it in a structure so it can work as a story. So it's still not real. It's based on reality, but it's not real. That doesn't mean, or that doesn't give you the um, the <laughs> liberty to do whatever you want, because people are gonna expect things from your story. Now, as I always have said in this channel, you can write in any way that you want, and you can experiment however you want. That's how we learn how to uh, present certain things. That's how. We learn how to incorporate and and fix our stories and get to the audience because we're writing for an audience. So the audience needs an explanation if something's gonna happen there that they're not gonna understand. So everything that you put in a story needs to have a purpose and that purpose have to be explained in a certain way. Certain way, I mean, that doesn't mean you have to fill your story with exposition. But if you think that the audience are not going to understand that, or you think the audience 
is not gonna let that go. You have to give an explanation why. Uh, in recent times, uh, Cobra Kai, I love Cobra Kai, I love the series. Uh, I have seen everything and I can't wait for season four. Um, but there's a lot of holes in, in, in Cobra Kai. Like, where are the parents of those kids? But you know what? Lots of people just let it go because it's so well written that you can't forgive that and you just enjoy the ride because for some reason the story is structured in a certain way that it's uh, subconsciously they're telling us, you know what, don't take everything seriously. Just we're trying to have fun for something that was made in the 80s and now we're bringing it back with a new twist and we're uh, recollecting and we're um, creating this based on nostalgia and all of that and that worked okay not everything had to be explained unless as I said before you think people will gonna uh, be thinking about that or we're not gonna let it go if you think that's gonna happen you have to explain not because it was uh, something that you just imagine or thought about it or came out of your head uh, means that you can do whatever you want. You can write whatever you want, but that doesn't mean it's going to work. Okay? So you have to be very uh, precise with this. So, yes, I was thinking about that uh, for a couple of months, and right now is when I just did uh, this video. So I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions about this or you maybe want a little bit more explanation, I think I explained the basic of it. Um, just let me know in the comments or if you have any other questions that you have about storytelling uh, more directly with screenwriting, let me know and I can keep on uh, doing these videos. My purpose with this channel is to give as much as I know or understand of screenwriting and storytelling for all of you that just have internet and have YouTube and just want to learn something new or have a different perspective of something that you have uh, heard before so I'll let you with this I hope you have enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video gracias YouTube